Okay, so when you look at the p-value of the test, you find that there is a sufficient evidence not to reject the null. In other words, that uh, the mean, right, is equal to 52. Okay, so remember this was like a one-sided test, so you can just say there is no sufficient evidence that the mean bill is over 52. Okay, or it's the same way as um, we fail to reject the null, right? And um, and you conclude that the mean is uh, not greater than 52. We also uh, can check slide 33. It's the same idea. So we're performing a test, right? And um, this one. Right? and you're given all the information that the sample mean is 100, uh, the, uh, the sample observation is 100, the sample mean is 2.84 with a standard deviation of 0.8, and you want to get the Z. Okay, So you set it up the same way. So you put the first thing is the uh, sample size, uh, then so we're given the information, so you put the sample size, right? Uh, the mean, the standard deviation 0.8 and the mu which is given 3 in the question okay and then you perform the same thing uh, which is the z test i and you get the results here okay the z is equal to 2 which is what we get here okay and um, so we're getting the same results and it's a two-sided test so let's say in a two-sided test, uh, you choose your own significance level. Let's say here, based on this test, it's obvious that it's 10% significance uh, level. Okay, no, sorry, this is 5% uh, because each side is 5 divided by 2, right? So this one is 2.5%, this is 2.5%, okay? So we want to uh, uh, check the two-sided test result what you get here is this number is less than 0 0.05 okay so in other words uh, you are uh, rejecting the null that the mean is equal to 3 and you're accepting the alternative that the mean or the sample mean is not equal to 3 okay um, so yeah, so the test is in the rejection region. That's why you are rejecting this and accepting the alternative, right? Okay, what else? Uh, let's see slide 40. So in slide 40, so there are so many examples here, okay? So you're given that the average cost of a hotel room in Chicago is $168 per night. Remember, this is the average, okay? So we're getting our information from here. And a random sample of 25 hotels resulted in, so we got a sample, so our N is 25, resulted in uh, getting the sample mean of 172.50 uh, with a standard deviation 15.4 and significance level 5%. If you are using one-sided test, then one side is going to be shaded and it's going to be 5%. If you are using two-sided test, then you divide this number by 2, so each side is going to have 2.5% or 0 0.025. So this is a two-tail test. Again, it all depends on the researcher whether you want a two-tail or we want a uh, one-tail test. Um, so here, uh, yeah, so you got the 5%, you divide it into 2, so you have two shaded regions, and you want to get the Z. So like, if you want to compute it by hand, you get the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. This part is called the standard error. All right, so what you do is, uh, again, you perform the same uh, command, and you're getting the Z1.46, right? And it's a two-sided test. You see this one is very high p-value, right? When I say very high, it's higher than the 10% significance level. It's higher than the 5, of course, and the 1. So there is a high probability that the null is true. There is a high probability 
that the mean or the sample mean is equal to 168. Okay, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis because of the high probability. Okay, so we say we do not reject no sufficient evidence that the mean cost is different from uh, or different than 168. Okay, um, and this is the z that we got from the results 1.46, right? So you can either compare the percentages, which is uh, which are the areas under the the graph or the bell-shaped graph, or you can compare the t-test, right? So this is the critical values of the t-test, and what you got is a smaller than the 2.064. In other words, you are in the acceptance region, so you fail to reject the null. Okay, so we, we're just repeating the same command. Now suppose that the critical value of t uh, test for a 95 confidence interval uh, which is on here right so we have a t test and we have uh, five percent right on uh, uh, in total or you divide it as each tail is 22.5 percent right and you're given here uh, that 24 is the degrees of freedom. So, which is uh, n minus 1. So, you calculate it this way and you are able to get the t. So, once you just type the, the command display um, inv t tail, right, uh, then you will be able to get the critical value. We put here n minus 1 to get the degrees of uh, freedom. And this is the one-sided uh, area under the graph, which is the 5% divided by 2. So you're able to get this number here. Okay. Next, for the t uh, statistic and the p-value. Okay, so this is nothing on the... Uh, this is just in, in general commands. It's not related to anything on... Uh, the slides, but it's similar to things that you see on uh, the slides. I'm sorry, I'm showing you my... I was running another code. Anyway, um, so let's see that. So suppose that you want to calculate the critical value of T for a 90% confidence interval, so 5 on each side, 5 and 5, 17 degrees of freedom. In other words, you want to find the value of T star for which 5% of the area under the curve lies before the t star, which is t critical value, and 5% lies below the negative t star. What is the positive and what is the negative t star? It's like here. This is the negative t star and this is the positive t star. In other words, you want to find the critical value, like this one, like the 2.064, um, for uh, or the upper critical value and the lower critical value the positive T star and the negative T star, okay? So you're given some information and you want to see whether you can get, you, of course you can get it from the table, uh, but there is also a way to get it from state. So again, display, and then this is like inverse T tail. You, you put your uh, degrees of freedom and uh, the significance level divided by two. Here I'm saying I have 10% significance level Right, 90% confidence means 10% significance. So 10 divided by 2, you will get the 5%. And then you run it, this is the critical value, 1.739. Okay. Uh, suppose that you want to find the p-value for, or the area, or the shaded area under the graph, for t greater than 2.09 with 4 degrees of freedom. Then you will uh, type display t-tail, this is to get the p-value of degrees of freedom and the t or the given t. When you uh, run it, right, it's going to be the p-value is, if you multiply this times 100, then it's going to be like 5.24% as a p-value. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm writing for you a note here that the p-value for t less than 2.09, this is the area above 2.09, right? How about the area below the 2.09? It's like here, I want, like 
what I just got is the area above 2.09 or let's say here 2.064 so we get something like around um, for the 2.09 we got something around 0 0.05 right and 2.09 yes and what we have here how about the area below right uh, the 2.09 so you type as display 1 minus t tail so when you type this one you get the remaining area which complements this number right so this area is 94 point it's around 94.76 percent and the area uh, and of course this is bigger because it's like the, the this part the whole area right starting from a certain critical value so of course the shaded area and the all the area below than the positive t star uh, would be like bigger right and both they will complement each other so if you add these two parts up you will get one or hundred percent which is everything area above the 2.9 and area below the 2.9 okay um, what else if I want to display uh, the two sides right so everything that we have seen so far is just one side either above 2.9 2.09 either below 2.09 and just remember 2.09 is just a number right you can we can plug in any number uh, if I want to get the two side the two sides right so all what you need to do is display two times t tail it's like this command you just multiply it times two right um, it's like this one I'm multiplying it times two and you're getting it as the the p-value right of the area above the 2.09 and the area below the negative 2.09 okay and since it's symmetric so you can just get one area and you multiply it times two next if I want to find the z-score uh, to find the p-value for a z less than 2, a negative 2.58, we type the following command. Display normal negative 2.58, okay? So now state understands that we are looking for the z test. And this one is giving us that or telling us that the p-value for the area under the graph less than negative 2.58, it's like something like around here. This is negative 0.064. So negative point, um, negative 0.58 is going to be like somewhere here, right? So this one is telling us that it's 0 uh, 0.0049 percent because this is the p-value. Oh, sorry. So if you multiply this times 100, then it's going to be like 0.494 approximately percent. Okay. Or you can like We'll talk about it in terms of a ratio. To find the p-value for z less than negative 1.96, okay, so you can just type similar like this one, right? You display and you get it as point, it's about 0.25 percent. Remember everything is just one side. If you want to get the other side then it's 1 minus and it's going to be again the other side right so and it's symmetric uh, what else um, so it's like this one is a 25 percent which is the area uh, less than the negative okay I'm sorry here it's less than the negative or if you want to use the positive then remove everything under the graph which is the one minus everything with uh, everything that is less than 1.96 okay uh, next what about if I want to get the two sides or the two-sided test then we multiply it times two I think it's obvious by now next to find the p-value for z less than 2.09 again uh, we type the following it's actually repeated right it's like this one so it's another just different number so this one is telling us that 
um, it's positive, right? So the area is expected to be big because you're asking what is the shaded uh, area under the graph um, for the area less than 2.09, then it's, it's big, right? It's almost 98%. Um, if you want to get the two sides, you just multiply it times 2. Okay, uh, and this is for the area under the 2.09. If you take 1 minus the area, then this is the area above the 2.09. Then you multiply it times 2. Okay, so every time you find the command normal and something in brackets, then it's the area under this number, below, below this number, or it's like uh, less than or equal to this number, right? So uh, now if I'm subtracting it from 1, then what is left is the area above 2.09. And then you multiply it times 2. Finally, uh, to find the p-value for z less than 2, again, you want to get the shaded region. So first of all, you get uh, the area under the 2, right? The shaded area under 2.0. You subtract it from everything, which is the 1, then what is left is the area above 2, and then you multiply it times 2 to get it like two sides. Okay, so the area under 2.0 is about uh, 4, uh, it's about, let's, uh, about 5%, right? So it's, a, or you can say it's 4.55%, okay? All right, so this is for uh, this week's uh, uh, Stata commands, right? It's all about the t-test, the z-test, and the p-value. All right, if you have any question, please post on the discussion forum. Thank you.